Okay, I'm going to try to do a uh, explanation here of Louis the Fourteenth. I have the board all set up. I'm not going to really go into how to set up the board. Uh, this is a game that is essentially an area control game, but there is kind of a twist to it. But what I'm going to do is, um, as I play through the first round, I'm just going to treat it simply as strict uh, area control game. And then as I resolve the phases of the game, you'll see why it's not exactly a strict area majority game and why maybe I should have made different decisions um, placing my little uh, people around. So I'm going to do a three-player game. So you'll see players have this supply that they get to use here, and then they have another supply that's on the game board uh, of people that they can't exactly get to right away. Um, but whoever is player one is going to have five of their uh, markers on inside the board. Whoever's player two is going to have five of their markers inside the board. Whoever's player three is going to have six markers inside the board. And whoever's player four, which I'm not using, would have seven markers inside the board. And one of the reasons why you have more markers inside of the board the later you are in turn order, um, I would believe, is because uh, in this game, since you are trying to control areas by going last, you kind of get final say uh, where you're going to place things. So you kind of know how the board is all set when it gets to your last turn, and then you you know that when you make a decision, nobody else is going to be able to counter your decision. Um, additionally, this game is played over four rounds. So if you're not playing with four people, if you're playing with three, like I'm doing here, um, somebody is going to get to go last twice, where everyone else will only get to go last once. And that could affect uh, the game. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, there's these different uh, goal cards that you're going to get that are secret. And each player is going to get two. Uh, these ones are the easiest, these ones are the hardest, and these are kind of like the middle level. So each one's going to get an easy and a hard goal. So... Um, I'll just flip these over for each player so you can see them, but these would be kept secret. And what you're going to do is there is this little uh, Louis the Fourteenth character, and he's sitting on a stack of gold cards. Now everyone starts with five uh, pieces of money. And what's going to happen is each round there's four of these cards. There's eight in total. You choose four, so it's random and they're not the same each time. You're going to take one of these cards at the beginning of each round and you're going to turn it over. And here it shows how much gold each person is going to get. So each person is going to get five additional pieces of gold. So get three of these and go five to each person. And then Louie is going to go on tile number three. And that is down here. Each tile is numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Different tiles give you different rewards. This will get you a crown, which is kind of like a wild token. Um, and as you can see, if you want to fulfill your mission cards, you need tokens. Like to fulfill this card, they need a ring and any other token. To fulfill this card, they need a uh, what I call is the holy hand grenade and a ring. And so you get those tokens by going on certain people. If you go here, you're going to get a helmet. If you go here, you're going to get the holy hand grenade. If you go here, you're going to get parchment. And if you go here, you're going to get a ring. Now you can also go to places with the crowns, which there's two of them. There's one in this corner and one in this corner. And if you get a crown, it's like a wild token. You can use it as whichever one that you want. Additionally, you can get other things. Um, you can get these little shields, which are each shield is worth one point at the end of the game. And then you get to place one of your influence markers uh, on another tile. This one is going to get you money. This one is going to let you place two markers on tile five. Plus, you get to add a, one of your um, markers in the supply to your actual play area. Uh, this one here, if you put... If you place two markers on here, you're going to get um, to take two of these shields, which are which would be two points at the end of the game. 
If you place here, you're going to get to take one of these cards, and if you place here, you're going to get to take one of these cards, and I'll explain the significance of that in a moment. So after you place Louis, so he's on number three, then you're going to resolve any of these cards that you have. Now, these cards would be turned over like this because they're secret, and in phase one, you would not have any of these cards resolved yet. So you would not do the resolve card phase because nobody has any resolve, but you would in phase two. So um, each card tells you when it can be played. This can be played during the mission phase, influence phase, mission phase, influence phase, this uh, whenever you want, and this during the supply phase, which is the phase that um, we are in now. So had this person, if this was round two and this person had completed this card, before we start the game, the person could take two additional dollars, or they could take one dollar, and since this is the yellow player, they could take one dollar and one of their markers out of this supply and put it into their play area to play during the round, or they could take two markers out of this supply and put it into their play area to play during the round. But nobody has any of these resolves, so that cannot be done yet. So that's phase one. You, tur you turn over the card, you place Louie, you give the money, you resolve these cards if you have any that you've completed and then each player is going to get five cards from this stack all right so i've dealt everyone five cards this information would be kept secret what you're going to do is you're going to play four of these five cards and so we will start with the start player here so we'll look at the start player's cards all right so the blue player has these five cards and um, so he's going to be able to play four of them. If you happen to have more than five cards, which is possible, you would play, you always play until you only have one card left, and then you always discard your last card. Um, so if he had seven cards, he would get to play six of them. But in the beginning, beginning of the game, everyone starts with five. So each card tells you where you can place influence. You can place influence in section one, section six, or section eight. Additionally, the person has uh, two wild cards. Each card has two uses, so as I said, you could place influence in these sections, or if you want, instead of placing influence in a section, you can discard one of these cards to take um, you know, three markers out of the, your pool here and add them to your hand here so that you could play them during the round. If you do that with a wild card, you only get to take two out of here and place it into your hand. All right, so in addition to placing influence in section 1, 6, or 8, they could use the wild card, and this would allow them to place two influence anywhere they want. Now, the way influence works is, um, well, first, let's see. So this person wants to get a ring, two, or two rings, a holy hand grenade, and anything, uh, and any other random tile. So if this person needs to get two rings, we see that, Number three is the place with the ring, all right? So they want to get influence into this tile. Now, the fact that Louis XIV here is going to be significant, but I'll just explain that later. So what the person could do is they don't have any number three uh, cards. So if they wanted to, they could discard a wild and place in number three, or they could try and get to number three by placing influence somewhere else. And the way that works is when you play a card, so for instance, if I were to play card, let's see, where's six, six, one, and where's eight, eight is over there. All right, um, let's just say I'm gonna play card one. All right, so I'm gonna take card one and I'm gonna discard it to the middle of the table. Now I could place one, two, or three influence cubes from my section onto card one. And now that I've done that, I can move, start moving these. I always have to leave one cube, one marker in the initial place where I placed it. So if I placed in one, I always I have to make sure I keep one of these in space one. But then if I want, I can move the other two, and I have to move them together. I can't. I can't like move this one up here and then this one up here. I have to move these two pieces at the same time to another tile. So if I'm trying to get a ring, all right, I want two rings. Um, a ring is here. So I placed up here and I'm trying to get down here. 
So I could leave my one here, I could take these two, and I could move them to tile four. Now that I'm in tile four, if I want, I could move one of these down to tile three. All right, I have to always leave one behind on the tile I left from. So at most, you're only gonna be able to move up to take area in three tiles. Now I have markers on these three tiles. However, if this is an area majority game, Perhaps, you know, I'm putting myself at risk, but this, this will be explained how it's not as big of a risk as you might think later. All right, so that was the first player's turn. So now we're going to look at player two, the green player. All right, the green player has a number three card, two number four cards, a number eight card, and a wild card. And if you're wondering what this stuff on the bottom of the card is, what this means, this is for tile number eight. If you just look at tile number eight, it just tells you it's just the exact same thing. Place two markers on tile five. Take one marker from your the general supply and put it into your purse. It just tells you what's on the card so you don't have to look at the card and see. It's just a notice for you. So this player wants a helmet, a ring, a holy hand grenade, and it's one of any other tile. So three and four actually get you, all right, Number four gets you onto the helmet space, and t this number three gets you onto the ring space. And those are two tiles that the person wants, a ring and a helmet. So let's just say this person plays number four. I'm going to put it here. Green is going to take three other markers and put it on tile number four to try and get the helmet. And now green has the majority on this tile. And then we go to the next player, which is yellow. Right, the yellow player has a 5, 7, 9, 12, and a wild card. The yellow is trying to get parchment, any other uh, piece, a ring, and another parchment. So none of these people give the parchment uh, piece, but it could use the wild. Now the parchment is number two. So far nobody has placed on number two. So if they wanted to, they could use their wild card, take two tokens from here, and put it on to number two directly. Or they could try to get to number two from other tiles. So, let's see, tile one, three, eight, and nine are next to it. This person actually has number nine, so what they could do if they wanted, they could place, do number nine, they could place that there. They could take three of their tokens, put them on number nine. Now they could either take one of their tokens from here and put it there, or they could take two of their tokens from here and put it there. Now, this uh, place gives you a wild token, and this gives you the um, parchment. Now the person, if they wanted to, they could leave two behind here and go for the parchment, saying, well, if they lose out on the majority here, maybe they'll win majority here. And by winning majority here, you get a wild, which is more valuable than the thing you want. But this player wants two parchment, so they kind of want to win both. So uh, they have to make a decision. Let's just say that they're going to leave one behind and put one in the uh, middle. And then it goes back to player number one's turn. All right, so blue has the six and the eight and the two wilds. One of the things the blue wanted was, let's see... They wanted the ring and the holy hand grenade and something. All right, so here's the hand grenade, and the ring is down here. They weren't really competing for this. Remember, they only have a marker here because they were trying to get from there to here. So one of the things, they're still doing okay for number one. They're still the only person going for that. So, and they're still the only person going for this. So then what do they want to do? Well, they have a six and an eight. If they go onto the six, that's going to get them um, a point, and then they're going to get to place one of their markers somewhere else. Or they could go to the eight, which is going to get them to be able to place two markers on tile number five, which gets them a random uh, thing. And they get to take a token. So let's just say they're going to do number eight. And currently, nobody, there's no competition for eight, so they're going to take a risk and just put one of their markers on number eight. 
they're going to turn their card into the middle, and that'll be Blue's turn. Alright, so we're back to Green. Green is doing fine on controlling the helmet, which it needs. It also needs the ring and the holy hand grenade. And Green does not have any influence on any of those, so it needs to get to tile 1 and tile number 3. Now, Green has a card for number 3, so Green is going to go ahead and place this card there. They're going to take their markers. They have three, of, they can place up to three of them. They're going to put two of them here, and then they can move some if they want. And they are going to move, let's just say they're going to move one of them down here because there's nobody on this tile yet. So maybe they could be able to grab one of these extra cards. So they're going to do that for their turn. And then we go to the yellow player. Alright, so for yellow it needs two of the parchment. It's going to get one here. There's nowhere else to get another parchment. What they would have to do is get a wild uh, token, which they're doing fine here. So let's just say for now they do have two parchment because so far they're controlling those two areas. So the other things they're going to need is a ring and one of any other color. So the ring is down here and then there's any other option here. Alright, the least, uh, the easiest one to take over with so far would be this one because there's only one blue marker there and that's number one. Now, let's see. This person does not have a number one card, but they do have a wild card. They have a 12 which is over here, which if they put three here, they could do, go from here to here to here, but that would only leave them with one here, which would not give a majority. And they have a seven, which is up here. So they could place here and move down here. So let's do that. They're gonna, I was gonna play a seven. They're gonna take three markers. They're gonna put three there. They're gonna take two and move two down here. So now they have majority of this tile. And that was yellow's turn. All right, so we're back to blue. Blue needs two rings, the holy hand grenade and something else. If we look at the ring tile, blue is losing majority here. And they also need the holy hand grenade, which they're now losing majority there. And then one of any other, they're not don't they're not going to be able to get one of any other here so far. One of any other here so far. They have no influence on the wild section here. There's an open wild section up here, which is tile number five. Now, they have tile number six, so they could place on six and then move here to try and get uh, the wild tokens from this one, or they could place on six and move down here to try and outdo. Um, yellow there, but let's just say they're going to go here to here. So blue, since there's no competition yet in these, he's going to take two instead of three. He's going to place two on six. That means he's going to take a six card, discard it, and then he's going to take one of those two and move it down here, and that'll be blue's turn. All right, so next we're back to green. Again, green wants to get the helmet, and it is dominating the helmet section right now. It wants to get the ring. It is dominating the ring section. It wants to get the holy hand grenade, and it has no influence there at all. And the other option is to substitute a wild, and it has no influence in this wild section and no influence in this wild section. So it's going to need to try and get into either tile 1, 5, or 9. And looking at the card, it has a 4, an 8, and a wild. Now the 8, all right, the 8 is up here. So to get to 9 from 8, you'd have to use three markers. You'd place here, then take two and move them here. And then from those two, you'd take one and move it there, and then you would tie down there. The 4 is here, and it could place here with the 4 and then move up to here. Or it has the wild, where it could just place for the two anywhere it wants. So let's see, two, let's just say it's going to use the wild. And green's going to take two and place it here on this wild token. So now it has the, in, the majority for this um, spot here. And now we're going to yellow's turn. All right, so yellow wants to get the parchment, which it currently is leading. The parchment, it's got the majority there. Uh, it wants the ring. It has nothing on the ring. And then the other options are anything you want and wilds. Well, for anything you want, it's doing okay up here. It just got taken over down here, and it has no influence up here. So they have a wild, a 5, and a 12. So if they place on the 12, yellow can move down to this tile, or up to this tile, and then over to this tile. But if they had 3, you go 3, move 2, move 1, and you'd still be tied from the 12. Or you could just try and get, go for some other things here. You might want to go for an entry card. Here, maybe they want majority to get one of these cards. Five is over here. Oh, wait, they have five. So they could actually just place into five directly. So if they did five directly, they could place two here to take control, or they could place three here and move one. If they moved one, it would either go here or here, and that's no majority competition. So let's just say they're going to play their five, and they're just going to take two of their markers and place it here. And this will be the final turn for each player going back to blue. All right, so it's blue's final turn. They have two wild cards left. Um, so for the rings, how are they doing for the rings? They're not doing too good for the rings. Uh, the hand, holy hand grenade, they're not doing too well over there. And then one of anything. One of anything, nope, nope. The blue is actually being defeated on all the main spots by everybody else. So what it could do 
is since it does want at least it, it could take the wild card and place it somewhere it could place it up here in the wild section to take control of that or maybe down here to take control of the king louis spot so which one does it want to do let's just say since the wilds are more flexible let's just say they're going to be placing their two markers here to take control of that spot and so then they put that there they have one card left this card which nobody would know what it is would be placed on top of this stack of cards here and then now we would go to the green player who has an eight and a four left their competition is for the ring which they're winning the holy hand grenade which they have no influence in the helmet which they're winning one of anything so then the other options are how's it doing in the wild spots it's winning that wild spot it has no influence in this wild spot all right so let's see this is green they wanted the holy hand grenade they have nothing there they don't have a number one card so what they have is a four and an eight so a four could get them into here which they're already dominating the eight would take them over here which means they could take over this section from the blue player and then move into either this section or this section um or they can discard a card and take three guys to have in the next round and let's just say they're going to do that let's just say they're going to discard this card they're going to take three people to use in the next turn meaning in the next round they're going to have six guys to use notice right now green only has three and yellow only has two the last card which nobody would know what it is would be placed on top of this stack of cards here and now we would go to yellow's turn and he has two cards all right so parchment He's dominating, and he knows no, he's the last player, so no one's going to get to go after him. So he knows however the board now is, it's not going to change other than what he does. So parchment, he's winning. He doesn't have to worry about it. The ring, ring he has no influence in. Uh, the other thing he needs is one of anything, and he's winning in this one for one of anything. And he can also compete for the wilds. He could go here or here. Now he has a wild card, so he could use his wild card to take over somewhere. So let's just say he uses his wild card, he takes his last two markers, and he places them down here to take over this token. His last card, nobody knows what it is, and it's placed here, and that is the end of the placement phase. And so this is kind of how the board now looks at the end of the placement phase. And so if this was a strict majority control game, which is how I was playing it, blue would win this, blue would win this, green would win this, yellow would win this, yellow would get this, blue would get this, yellow would get this, yellow would get this, green would get this, green would get this. All right, but now it's not a strict area control game there is another factor to it and so that's what i'm going to explain how maybe some of the decisions made would not have been made the same way if you knew this next stage of the game all right so you resolve them in numerical order so we're going to start with tile one now yellow has the majority here so if this was a strict area control game yellow would get this token blue would get nothing and that's how it would be resolved but that's not the case. Whenever there's a money symbol here, what happens is the person with the majority gets this item. So yellow's gonna get this. And so I'll put this in yellow's play area. And then yellow's figures are gonna go down to this supply area here where they don't have access to them unless they discard a card to get them. Now that leaves blue here. However, the person, the people who are left behind now have the option of still getting this tile, but they have to pay three gold to do so. So Blue's going to do that. Blue is going to take his five dollars, turn it into the bank, take two dollars back. He is now going to get this tile, put that in his play area, and his marker is actually going to go back to be placed in the next round. So, that's something you might want to consider. If, if you have the majority here, you will get this item for free, but you're going to lose your markers to the supply area that you don't have immediate access to. If you are not in the lead, if you're in like second place, you can still get this. You just have to be willing to pay for it, but the benefit of that is that your markers that you use to compete are going to go back to your play area to be used in the next round. So if you look right now, blue has all these markers that be played in the next round. Green has three, and yellow has nothing right now as it stands. All right, so that is that one. So let's go down to number two. Number two is the same thing. The person who has the majority is going to lose their markers to this area. Then they're going to get this tile. So they're going to take this, and that's just going to go to yellow's area. Now, 
had somebody played in here, they could pay $3 to get this tile and get their markers back for the next round. Next, we would resolve this tile, but since it has Louis the 14th on it, it's actually resolved in a different way, and so I'm going to skip this till the end. But actually, one thing you need to do is you need to take all these cards that were used. I forgot to do this. You're going to take them and add them to this stack, and then you're going to shuffle all these together. And um, the reason is why the reason why you would do that is because whoever has the majority here is going to get to take one of these cards. So you need to they get to have access to all of them uh, when that happens. So let me shuffle these up real quick. Okay, so now let's go back. So like I said, I'm going to skip number three for now. Oh, and I didn't do this, but after um, after you take the tokens off of a tile. It actually gets flipped, and so now the uh, qualifications changes, and you'll see what this means in a minute. This one will get flipped because people went here, and so the qualifications to get this tile has changed. So we're skipping Louie. We'll come back to it. All right, so now this one, green has the majority. Now green is going to lose these tokens. And he's going to get the helmet, so I'll put that in his play area. And now blue has the option to pay $3 to get the helmet. And he's going to do that, so I'm going to go over to blue's money area. I'm going to take one, well, we'll take the five. We'll put the five in here, take $2 back. Blue is going to get the helmet, so we'll put that over here. And blue is going to get his marker back to use in the next round. The tile will now be flipped over. Now we go to number five. Okay, so now we'll see what this means uh, here. All right, in this section, this means actually means only one player is going to get the reward, and that is whoever has the most influence. So this actually here is a strict majority only. So blue has the most influence on this tile, so that means yellow is going to get nothing. So yellow's markers go back to him to be used in the next round. Blue is going to get the token and that's going to go over here. But blue is going to lose these markers to this supply and he doesn't have immediate uh, access to them. And now this tile will be flipped over for the next round. And there is now a new qualification to get this tile. So, as you saw, the one meant strict, only one person gets it, and that's the person who has the majority. So when we flipped all these middle ones over, they went from person in second place could use money to buy the item to now only one person can get this, and that's whoever has the majority. So that's what these changed to down here. All right, here we have blue. Now, He's the only one here, so you'd say, hey, he has the majority, he gets the reward. But that's not what this symbol means. This symbol means anyone who has two of their markers here gets this reward. So Blue's actually not going to get anything, so he's going to get his little marker back. And obviously Blue would not have made that decision if, uh, if I wasn't playing it just to show you the majority, how ma area majority is different, but anyway... So anyone here, if every player has two markers here, they're all going to be able to get the reward regardless. So that means this one that we just resolved, where the person who had the majority gets the item, now in the next round, all you have to do is put three of your markers here, and you're automatically going to get the wild. You don't have to worry about competing for it. Nobody got this reward, so I believe that means it doesn't change. It doesn't flip over. So next we resolve this one. Whoever has the majority is going to get $5. Only one person is here, which is yellow. So this actually is going to go to this pool down here. And yellow is going to get $5. So that goes there. And this will flip over. And next time, if you want $5, all you have to do is place two of your markers here, and that's it. Don't worry about anything else. Now we go to number eight. Whoever has the majority is going to get this reward. Second place would have been able to pay for it. There is no second place, so majority loses their marker to the supply here. They're going to get to place two of their markers from this section, not from their supply, but from this section, onto tile number five. So this for the next round, they already have two of the three they need to be able to get this wild card. And they're going to be able to take one 
marker from this kind of internal supply and move it to their main supply. All right, and then now this was used, so it's gonna flip. Next time, only whoever has the majority on this tile will get access to it. All right, so now we move down to this tile. Whoever has the majority is gonna get this. So that means green loses. So green gets their markers back. So those go over here. Yellow is gonna lose their markers to here. Yellow is gonna get one of these tiles, which is a wild tile, and get to place that there. And this is gonna flip, and next round, whoever is in second place, maybe, I can't remember third and fourth, I'll get, also get this, maybe they do, but anyway, if you're not in first, you have the option of paying five to get the reward. Going down to number 10, nobody went here, so we don't flip it. And so just so you know, on an, once somebody places, on the next round, anyone who places two of their markers here is gonna get these shields, and each shield is worth uh, one point. All right, moving over to number 11. Whoever has the majority is gonna get a green card. Green has the majority, so their marker is gonna to go to the middle, and they're gonna get a green card to go to their section. Now, at the end of the round, everyone's gonna get five green cards. So that means in the next round, this player will have six, meaning they'll have one more than everybody else, which means they're gonna to get to go last because you play all of your cards but one. So if this person has one more card than everyone else, that means they're gonna to get to play five cards before they discard their six, where everyone else is only gonna to get to play four cards before discarding their fifth. So not only, so that kind of guarantees you get to go last, unless somebody else also goes here, um, and then you're competing with them. So now, next time, anybody who goes here, first will get the card for free, but anyone else would have to pay $3 to get it. And number 12, nobody went here, but we're just gonna pretend green did here so I could explain what this does. So green is here, green could pay $4, so he'll do that. So put in five, take back one. And now what he gets is he gets a shield. So you're gonna come up to this area and you're just gonna randomly take a shield and these are kept secret, but you know, for us. So we see he has this shield here and then he's gonna get an entry card. So he's gonna get this card here. This will be kept secret. And what he has is a card for number 11 and I'll explain what that means in a moment. All right, now we're gonna go back and resolve the one that I skipped, which is Louis Fourteenth. All right, when Louis Fourteenth is on a tile and he'll only ever be on one of the inner court tiles, what's gonna happen is you ignore this here. Whoever has the majority on this tile is gonna get this reward, so this, and they're gonna to get to get a free crown card, a wild card as well. And so those two cards, that was green, so green's gonna get those two objects. Um, I believe these go back into the middle, if I'm not mistaken. And then whoever has the second most, which there only happens to be one other person here, is blue. But they're they're going to still get the ring tile. They just won't get the uh, wild tile. So blue is going to actually also get that. Um, you know, if there was a third place, third place wouldn't get anything. If you were tied for first place... And everyone tied for first would get the ring, but nobody would get the bonus uh, wild tile. So that is how Louis the Fourteenth is resolved. Louis goes back to the card section here to be dealt out next round. And second place... Okay, yeah, I had to check. Second place, you actually get your marker back. All right, and so then this would flip over. All right, so that would be the end of that phase. Next, what you do is you resolve... Uh, fulfilling your goals. So we look at the markers that blue has. To resolve this goal, they would need a ring and any other card. And to resolve this, they would need the holy hand grenade and a ring. So this works as a wild card. So they'll use this wild card as the ring they don't have. And this is a ring and anything else. So they'll use this as their anything else. And so they'll turn these back into the supply. So helmet ring and crown can go there and the holy hand grenade could go there and now blue actually has access to these cards and they're going to get to replace them and they get to replace each card with another one from up here of anything they want so you know they could take like a really one that's more difficult but probably has a better reward maybe and let's just say they take another medium level one so now Blue has two cards they can use in the next uh, round. 
and they have two that they're going to try to fulfill. So if we look at green, green needs a ring and a holy hand grenade. Well, it has a ring and it has a wild, and it has a helmet and one of anything else. So he's only going to be able to do one. Which one does he want to do? Uh, this one says you may pay two money to trade one power chip for a crown. That's pretty good. Uh, at the beginning of the influence phase, place one of your influence markers from the general supply where Louis XIV stands. Um, well, if he does this, he's spending a wild to get a wild, and it's going to cost him $2 to do that. So I'm going to have him do this one instead. So this would be unfulfilled. He would still have this marker left over. This would be completed. These would go back. The ring and the crown. And so that would be the end of the phase. Now, you're only allowed to keep one of these uh, at the end of your turn. If you ever have more than one, not like one, one of any type, not just one of the crown, but one of, or one of the helmet, but only one token. So no matter how many different ones you have, you'll only keep one. Your other ones, you return them, and in exchange for them, you get these crowns, which are worth um, one point each at the end of the game. So that is green, yellow. All right, he has, uh, let's see, he has the parchment, which goes here. This doesn't do anything, but it's one of anything. Or he could do the parchment, and this is a wild. I'll have him do that, because it's going to allow him to get more figures, and he doesn't he only has two. So he's going to turn in the crown and the parchment. So this will remain unfulfilled. I'll fulfill this, which means he gets to take one of these cards. And I don't think I took one for him, so he fulfilled one, so he gets a card. Let's just have him take a hard one. And so there's that. He only has one of these left over, so that's fine. And that's the end of that phase. Then you would start over, you would take this gold card, you would look. Each player would get $2, Louis XIV would go to tile number 3, which is the same one it was on. But now if you look, um, then you would go, okay, does anyone have any supply phase? This is the supply phase, so now y'all would be able to, if he wants to use this, to take two guys out of this pool here and add them to a section here. Then everybody's going to get five cards, you know, so you know he would get five cards, and he would get five cards, and he would get five cards. Uh, the first player token would move to this player, they would go first. So as you see, blue's going to be able to play a lot more markers than everybody else. Green, not as many. Yellow, not as many. So if green wants to get more markers, instead of turning over cards and putting markers in a section, like here, section three, they're going to have to put this card, discard it, to take three uh, things to put back into its supply. So that's one thing to consider with these cards. You know, here, everyone knows, I, if I place three, I get this. But, you know, you might want to go for the ones with the money, like here. Maybe you are willing to just put one marker here, and not have the majority and pay three so that you can get the card, but you can use your markers elsewhere, and by not having the majority, you would get this back. So hopefully that makes some sense. The end of the game is each card that you have completed is worth five points. Each crown that you have is worth a single point. There is a thing, and this is a random aspect of the game, is let's say these are the tokens that one player had, these are the tokens another player had, these are the tokens another player had here. What you would do is you would flip... Well, there shouldn't be blank ones. You would flip over your tokens. Everybody would do that. I think there's like ten... 10 different types of tokens. But anyway, you would flip over all your tokens. And then if you have the majority of something, so like this player has three of this. So right now this player has five points here. So nobody else has these. So he has the majority, so he would randomly get one more token to add to his supply. Does anybody else have this? Yes, they both do, so that's a tie. Does anybody else have this? Yes, they do, that's a tie, so that's it. This person has the majority of this kind. So right now they have four points, but because they have the majority, they're going to get one more. Nothing there, nothing there. This person has the majority of this kind, so they're going to get one more token. And then tied there, they're the only one with this kind, it looks like, so they're also going to get another token there. All right, so now they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five points. One, two, three, four, five, six points. And then, you know, here's ten points here, five points here, which has five points there. Anyway, hopefully that kind of overview helps explain it a little bit. Last thing, I was cleaning up and I realized I didn't explain the, the intrigue card that somebody got. All this means is uh, when you're going around resolving all of the um, cards, when you get to the one that you have, so this is number 11, when it got to this card, let's say it looked like... I don't know, let's say it looked like this, all right? So right now, um, green has the majority and yellow has the minority. And let's say yellow had this card. What they could do is, before this is resolved, they could say, oh, I have the entry card for that card, and they could either take two markers from their personal supply or one marker from this internal supply and add it to the card. So, um, you know, yellow might not want to do this here. Maybe yellow would rather play $3 than lose four tokens, because that's what would happen. He'd take two to place it here, which would give him a majority, and then he would get 
this for free. But, you know, it might be more effective if, you know, where you need majority. But uh, anyway, uh, so you could do that so that he could take the majority, or if you wanted to, he could take one from the middle supply and say, hold on, and then he puts this here to make it so that it's tied and nobody gets it, and he wouldn't, these would just go, um, gosh, I'm not, I actually might go back to the player, which means I'd be a way for him to get another token. Instead of get, taking two back, he would take three back, and he would have prevented green from taking this. But anyway, that's the entry card. You get to play them when you're resolving a tile, and they let you add either two more markers to the tile or one more marker to the tile, depending on which section you take it from.